South Florida has a super past hosting 10 games spanning six decades with some of the most memorable moments in Super Bowl history. The first, 1968, Super Bowl II at the Orange Bowl. That famed venue hosted five championship games starring Vince Lombardi, Johnny Unitas and Terry Bradshaw, just to name a few. But for historian Dr. Paul George, the best moment was Super Bowl III 50 years ago. And that was a Joe Namath Bowl where the Jets came in 18 point underdogs to the Colts who seemed like they were just, you know, beyond defeat. And he guaranteed a Jet victory. He, in so many ways, made that Super Bowl so much more interesting, the build up to it and the excitement of the bowl itself. And that, I, I, I maintain, that set the stage for every Super Bowl afterwards. It really put the Super Bowl in America's psyche. Trivia buffs may know that the Orange Bowl era included the first use of artificial turf and the aptly named Blooper Bowl of 1971 because of a record 11 turnovers by Dallas and Baltimore. That was the only time the MVP was a member of the losing team, Cowboys linebacker Chuck Howley. Fast forward to 1989 when Super Bowl 23 is played at the then Modern Era Stadium built by and named for Joe Robbie. He said, I'm going to build my own stadium. He had three teams in a row that were Super Bowl teams, and he thought he needed a, a more befitting venue for these teams. The new location, known today as Hard Rock Stadium, has seen epic moments of its own. In 1989, Joe Montana and the 49ers beat the Bengals with a TD pass to John Taylor with just 34 seconds left in the game, winning the first of back-to-back -back titles for San Francisco. And then history made again in 2007 as Tony Dungy's Colts beat the Bears, making him the first African-American head coach to win a Super Bowl. And the first New Orleans Saints championship win came in then Sun Life Stadium in 2010. It was a gift from uh, Roger Goodell to me. Rodney Barreto is chairman of the Miami Super Bowl host committee. He has a lot on his plate with the massive effort and coordination that goes into planning the biggest party in town. But the job has some incredible perks. 2007, my favorite moment was having Prince sing Purple Rain in the Rain. And that, that, that definitely is the... Uh, highlight of my uh, participating in Super Bowls. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Stephen Ross and his generosity as the owner of the stadium and the Dolphins that he invested over 500 million to allow us to get back into the game of going after Super Bowls. And for Barreto and his team, Super Bowl 54 is already taking shape. Even if you don't get a ticket to the big game, fans will be able to head to downtown Miami for the Super Bowl Live Village. If you're a sports fan especially, uh, even if you're not a sports fan, you can come down to Bayfront Park. There's going to be free concerts. There's going to be food and beverage. There's going to be all kinds of activations that are going to allow you to participate in the events. When you combine South Florida's enviable winter weather and our status as a world-class destination, Barreto predicts we could potentially see a Super Bowl game here every five years. Lauren Pastrana, CBS4 News, tonight.